Amy Ogan is an assistant professor at Carnegie Mellon University, and we'd like to have her come up and tell us about her exciting research, because it's fun to see all the uh, neat things that are happening here. Good afternoon, everybody. I've been in Pittsburgh for about 15 years now, and I have never looked back. So it's been really great to hear all of these wonderful talks uh, to keep me informed about all the things that are happening in other areas of the city. My work, uh, the lab I direct at Carnegie Mellon, works on problems and opportunities in educational technology. And so I've worked, um, spent a lot of time in classrooms here in Pittsburgh and also around the world. So let's see if I, right, so. Uh, you probably are familiar with the fact that our classrooms up until very recently have remained the same for generations. You know, a, a teacher standing in front of a set of students in a classroom, you know, maybe we've added a set of PowerPoint slides. But as technology comes into the mix, we are about to see a data revolution happening for education as well as in many other areas of our economy. Now, you may think that this, uh, yeah, <laughs> you may think this revolution is about to come through MOOCs or massive open online courses. And in part, people are uh, really engaged in this area because computers can collect a lot of data on all of the different types of things that we do. You know, they can tell where a student clicks and when. They can tell what they type into a discussion forum, or they can see sort of, you know, when they start and stop a video. However, this data is actually fairly impoverished to all of the sorts of things that students actually do think and feel as they're learning while they go through their educational experience. However, on the other hand, real classroom data has a lot of potential, if only we could get it. And that is one of the things that my lab is working on right now. Now, uh, if you look at the classroom, rich data is being produced all the time. So things like student engagement and emotions tell us all sorts of things about how much they're learning. So what we can tell are things like students' posture, their facial expressions. These sorts of things tell us what they're thinking and feeling as they go about their day, um, and they tell us a lot about what those students are learning. In addition, everything that the teacher says, everything that the students say, is also rich data about what's happening in the classroom. So, you know, if the teacher is, is the teacher asking questions? Is the teacher engaging in small groups? Are the students collaborating with one another? Are they challenging each other's ideas? What are all the great things that are happening in the classroom on a daily basis? Now, normally the teacher is the one who acts as sort of a sensor in the classroom. And what I mean by that is that an expert teacher is doing a million calculations in every class period about exactly what's going on with each of their students, what they're doing, how their actions are affecting their students, et cetera. But a novice teacher, on the other hand, often has to rely on getting back home at the end of the day, and, and maybe they have a set of assignments that their students have finished, and they can sit back and think and review, do my students understand what's happening? Now, in my work, we're using commodity sensors, things like uh, depth cameras, microphone arrays, et cetera, very cheap technology, in order to collect all sorts of data on the things that students and teachers are doing as they go about their day in the classroom. And so we are able to collect all of these things, the, the great things that I mentioned just a moment ago, and we're able to do simple machine learning techniques on them to understand what sorts of things are happening in the classroom, and then be able to provide the data back to the teachers at the end of the day for them to reflect on. And you might think of this as sort of like a personal informatics system for teachers. And you're probably already familiar with this sort of a system. You might be wearing a tracker right now. Um, it collects 
data on all of the things that you do in your day, whether it's the number of steps that you take, the calories that you're eating, all sorts of other things that happen in your daily performance. And then it can provide that back to you to reflect on at the end of the day. Similarly, we're able to provide teachers with a dashboard that shows them all of the things that happened in their classroom over that day. And one of the cool things that I think happens here is that we're not just able to collect the, the information about what students are doing, but also collect information on what teachers are doing so that we can help them connect their actions to how they affect student learning outcomes. And they can go on here and sort of uh, collect um, uh, information about what they've been doing and then connect those to goals that they can set for themselves over the course of the school year. Now even more exciting to me is the ability to actually be able to take this information and use it in real time in the classroom. And this is what we're doing in my lab at Carnegie Mellon right now. And what I would say is that it requires some very careful design, but we're uh, working on doing this in conjunction with our teachers using Carnegie Mellon's classrooms as sort of a living laboratory to experiment on the ways that we can actually influence teaching in the moment. And so you see here that uh, we can sort of turn the screen red when we want to tell the teacher to shut up, be quiet, it's time to let your students speak now. And so our, our uh, instructors at CMU get very excited about the ability to use all this data to reflect on and change their teaching in the course of their day. All right, and so then after they are able to use this system in their classroom, they can go home at the end of the day, and now this is when they have time to reflect on all of those great things that happened, see if they've achieved their goals. Maybe they now say, well, I'd like to get my students talking earlier on in the period, or I'd like to have the students in the back speak and have a voice in the classroom. And they can do that using this dashboard that we provide. Now, of course, I first said that MOOCs are not the answer, uh, but we can also use very similar techniques to what I'm talking about to be able to go ahead and improve learning online as well. So, of course, we can also use cameras, microphones, et cetera, to detect the facial expressions of students who are learning online, or whether there's somebody beside them giving them support or help, whether they're frustrated or confused. So, in the future, what we'd like to be able to do is move forward to being able to look not just at the classroom or not just at these long online learning experiences, but actually be able to combine many sources of data so that we know what students are doing in their small groups as they're using their technology, what teachers are doing as they walk around and support students in the classroom. And only now is this sort of ability to combine the technology with the deep educational experience becoming a reality. All right, so this is one of the many things that we're working on in my lab at Carnegie Mellon. Thanks for your attention. I think I can take a few questions. to getting into the classroom. And one of the things uh, that we're working on is teacher acceptance. Some teachers are more excited about using technology than others, very understandably. Um, another is making sure that we deal with issues like data privacy as we're collecting all of these sorts of things as students are, are learning. So one of the things that we're doing right now is only working, we're actually not using the things that students say, we're just using the fact that they have spoken at all so that we can um, make sure that everybody's comfortable with introducing some of these techniques into the classroom. We'll see where that goes as, as we move into the future where people have different expectations. Uh, are you trying to develop metrics of uh, teaching quality and uh, learning quality? Yes, that is an excellent question and uh, something that people are sometimes concerned about is uh, using this as a uh, teacher quality assessment. 
So right now, the way that we're working with these systems are to allow teacher reflection um, and uh, improvement in their own desired path. So that is actually one of the things that novice teachers come up and ask us immediately is, how do I know if I'm doing well? And so what we're looking at doing is providing a variety of things like baselines. What are expert teachers doing in this area? How is, does their performance compare? How does it compare to other novice instructors in the same area? So that they can move forward and set their own goals. Every classroom is a little bit different and we don't want to necessarily impose hard limits for them to reach or achieve. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the places where we're doing a variety of explorations to look at how that might impact teacher um, performance as well. Yes. Yes, we are very concerned about student privacy. Um, and so, of course, all of our work goes through an institutional review board for ethics um, uh, assessment. So we make sure that everything we're doing is ethical. The students are all completely aware that their uh, data is being collected. But as I mentioned, we're able to do things like obfuscate their faces or not detect the words that they're saying in order to uh, make sure that some of the more sensitive things that they're doing may be protected before we move into exploring other options. And it looks like we're, we're moving forward. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Amy.